Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I'm your yarn host, Jennifer. Today's episode is sponsored by Premier Yarns. Uh, Premier Yarns contacted me. They wanted me to recreate a project that I had done a couple months ago. The idea behind me recreating the project is to get us all together to have a project that is in common with us so that we kind of feel a fellowship. Um, I know things have been kind of rough, okay? there's I try my best on this channel to not talk about anything and not discuss it and just be fun and lighthearted because you guys are hearing enough of that everywhere else. So what we're trying to do, myself especially, and Premier Yarns is have a project that we're making together that is a home-based product a home-based project that we can all make together, something that will brighten our mood, something that will give a little sunshine into our day, a little happiness, you know? So if you guys remember, I will insert the picture here. That was my rainbow rug made out of this beautiful yarn. I have, I have a bunch. <laughs> Premier sent this to me, so I will say that Premier sent this to me to use. I did not buy this with my own money. I just wanted to say that outright. However, this is just a remake of something I made and paid for myself several months ago. So this is not a biased opinion. This is legitimately a product, project that I enjoyed making, and I know that you guys will enjoy making it, okay? So the, the rainbow bath mat can also be a rug. You can put it anywhere in your house. And I'm going to give you guys several options to alter it to your own personal taste or your own personal space. Because I, do, I know you don't all have a big bathroom like I do. And I do have a rug in my smaller bathroom and I'm going to give you guys the pattern to that as well. Um, and I'll put a picture of that in here. Now, this rug is going to have some options. You don't have to buy all six balls to make this rug. You can make this rug with, let's say, your three favorite colors. We'll just randomly pick three. I don't really look good together, but let's say these three. That would be a beautiful rug. Or these three. <laughs> this would be a beautiful rug. So it doesn't have to be the big giant all six, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to turn the camera around and we're gonna go through this. It's a pretty easy project. Um, if you can't make a magic ring, that's how I start. If you can't make a magic ring, I will walk you through that as well because it's going to start off working in the round and then it's gonna end up being a back and forth pattern. Okay, I'll walk you through all that. It's easy. Don't worry about it. Okay, so let's turn this camera around. Let's get started. All right, so let's get started. Now, this the, the size rug that I have in my bathroom actually takes six skeins of this. You can make it different sizes. Like I said, you can make it with just three skeins. You make it with four. You make it up to however big you want. But my big rainbow rug is a six skein project in this the yarn we're using is premier home cotton extra large and i'm gonna tell you a little bit about that it is 82 yards it is 85 percent cotton and 15 percent polyester it is considered a jumbo number seven and it requires well it suggests a 15 millimeter hook my last rug that i made i made with a 12.5 no it was 11.5 millimeter hook and it was a boy hook and I the only one I could find right now is a 15 so we're using a 15 so and you can machine wash this warm tumble dry low and it comes in lots of colors and there's not just solid colors on their website they actually have marled which is actually very beautiful they have I believe they have a lot of these colors in the marl so they have the blue with the white marl so it's blue and white spread through and this is the same makeup as the cotton, the regular uh, Premier Home Cotton, except it is like several strands braided almost together. 
Isn't that cool? It's a very, very unique yarn. I don't think I've seen any other yarns like this. All right, so to get started, we can start this one of two ways. You can start this with a magic loop, which is how I'm going to do, or you can chain four and slip stitch the chain four together to make a ring. But I'm gonna show you guys how I do a magic ring, okay? You put your yarn like this, as if you're making like a uh, a ribbon, one of those, those cause ribbons. And you keep the short end underneath on the bottom, okay? And then you stick your hook through, you pull up a loop, okay? And then you chain one to lock it in, all right? Now it's locked in place, you got a magic loop. And it's an adjustable loop. What we're gonna do for this first row is we're going to do seven single crochets, okay? One, two, three. I'm going to pull my tail, make the ring shorter. Three, that was three, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And seven. Pull that tail one more time. So we got seven. And we're gonna pull the ring really tight. I'm gonna pull that the short tail really tight. And we'll get that those stitches closed in as tight as we can. This might take a little bit of muscle. See that? We want that closed off because that's gonna be the bottom of our rug. Okay, and then we are going to slip stitch right here over the top of that tail to join our row. And then we are going to chain three. And in that same, that same hole, we are going to double crochet. That chain three in the beginning is going to start, it's going to count as a double crochet in the beginning of every row. So every row will start a chain three and a double crochet in the chain, the same stitch. And that's going to keep it so that it's not shrinking up as we go along because this is actually going to be a flat edge and it's going to be flat all the way across because we're not going to go all the way around and connect. Okay. So for the next one, two, three, four stitches, we are going to put two double crochet, okay? And these two bottom ones will stay right where they're at. So that's two double crochet, and then we'll do two in this hole. Try to keep on top of that tail so that you don't have to weave it in later. One and two over the top of the tail. <coughs> And we'll go to the next one and we'll do two more double crochet and this is going to take some getting used to using a big hook and using a big thick yarn like this takes a little bit of getting used to and it definitely takes some <laughs> forearm power definitely your forearms will be tired at the end of this but you'll have a really nice rug and you'll have uh, a beautiful piece that will brighten up any room. Okay, so we got two here and one there. Let's see. Let's count two, four, six, eight. We need two more to make it ten. One, and two. All right, now we got to the end of the row, and this is what it's going to look like. It's going to be kind of like a C with a little bump there, and that's fine. We need 10 double crochets, and then we are going to chain three. One, two, three. Every row is going to start with a chain three and a double crochet. And this counts as two double crochets. Now, if you've ever worked in the round, you will know how to do this, and this will be so easy to you that you won't even have to think or follow a pattern. 
But if you've never worked in the round, this is how you work in the round for almost anything. And if you want to use a thin yarn and follow the same pattern, you will have a half moon shaped shawl. And you can use the regular home cotton for that. You can even make a thin rug and use the regular Premier home cotton for that if you want. Or the rodeo. The rodeo is really good. All right, now. To start this row, we have our two double crochet, and then we're going to do just a single double crochet in this one. And this is going to be the repeat pattern pretty much for the whole thing. Two double crochet in this one. One double crochet in this one. Two double crochet in this one. One double crochet in this one. Two double crochet in this one. One double crochet. Two double crochet, and then in this last chain three space, we will have one double crochet. Okay, and then for the next row, what are we going to do? We're going to start the row with a one, two, three, chain three, turn, and a double crochet. Every row is going to be like this. Okay. Now, you see I'm using a 15 millimeter, and this is a little bit loose and floppy. If you use a smaller hook like a 12 or 11.5 or whatever you can find, this will be more stiff. It will actually be, don't mind this, this is my leftover. It will be a lot more stiff like this, okay, and a little bit more sturdy. This is actually going to be a bonus project too, because you're going to have some scraps left over from this. And that's kind of a cool thing I want to show you. Okay, so the next row, now we did, in this previous row, we did two double crochet, one double crochet, two double crochet, one double crochet. This one we're going to do two double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, two double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, two double crochet. All right? So two, a double crochet in this one, a double crochet in this one, and then two double crochet in this one. And then single double crochet, single double crochet, and then two double crochet. So double crochet, and that's the pattern for this row. Double crochet, and two double crochet in the same one. One double crochet here, one double crochet there, and then two together. Now I will tell you that I have had this rug in my bathroom, I want to say since December. So I've had a good amount of experience with it. It is outside my bathtub, so pretty much I'm the one that uses it. <laughs> Um, it absorbs water really good. I don't have to have anything underneath it or a non-slip pad because this yarn is not smooth and it is not slippery. So it is perfect. It is perfect for this. Um, yeah, see we've got two double crochet and then the last two will be just single double crochets. So just a double crochet there and a double crochet there. And then we're going to... Chain three, one, two, three. You guys got it. Flip your work. Bam. And a double crochet in the same hole because we're starting a new row. And what this does is putting the double in the first row, in the first stitch of every row, is it keeps this kind of flat. Because otherwise, if you don't put the double in the start of every row, it tends to want to do this. Okay. And the more it goes up, the more at an upward angle it does. 
And that's not fun for everyone. Now, this next row is going to be the two double crochet here. So the chain three and the double crochet. And then guess what? It's going to be one, two, three double crochets and then two together. One, two, three double crochets and two together. And the entire pattern is like that. Every time you go up a row, you'll add an extra double crochet. So this row was two crochet, two double crochets all together. The next row was double crochet, a single double crochet, and then two double crochets together. This one is a double crochet, a double crochet, a double crochet, well, two double crochets, and then two single double crochets, and then two together. And the next row will be the two double crochets, and then one, two, three double crochets, and two together. The next row will be two double crochets to start, and then four double crochets, and then two together. And the next row beyond that will be two double crochets to start, then five double crochets, and then two together. And that is the entire pattern, basically. You're just gonna add a double crochet into the mix every time you go up a row. So what did we say this one was? Um, two, so this one will be three. One, two, three double crochets across the next three stitches. And then two together. That's not crochet two together. You just, it's two separate double crochets in the same, in the same stitch. And then we have one and two and three double crochets across the next three stitches. And then two double crochets in the stitch. Now what I'm saying about this rug is, um, I have not had any problems with it collecting mold. I have not had any problems with any funky smells coming off the rug. It is completely machine washable. So if I want to throw it in the washing machine and the dryer, I can do that as often as I like. And it is held together beautifully. And like I said, I have not at all needed to have any non-slip thing underneath there. Now, if you have really slippery floors, like from, I want to say the 80s had really like slippery or li like linoleum. If you have linoleum in your bathroom, it's a little bit of a slicker product. Whereas I have porcelain tiles that are kind of uh, textured. So this doesn't slide. If you, if you are afraid this is going to slide, you can sew um, non-stick or non-slip rubber matting to the bottom of this in just a few spots. And it will stop the rug from being slippery, although I have not had any problems with this, even on my wood floors. So, and you can put, there's a lot of things that you can do to make a rug non-stick or, or non-slip. keep saying non-stick, you want it to be a little sticky. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. And I suggest if, if you feel afraid that it's gonna be slippery at all, I want you to put some non-slip non something on the bottom of this. Research it on the internet. They sell it on um, Amazon. You ain't got to leave your house for it. You have it delivered. All right. And then we end that in just some single, some single double crochets. And that's what we have so far. Now, I've already done the math and figured out so that we don't have any weird breaks in color. I figured out how far this cake will go for each row. So we are going to continue with the first color, whatever color you pick, I picked yellow, and we're gonna continue this for 10 rows, and in the 11th row, we are going to change color. Now I'm gonna leave you to your own devices for a little bit until we change color, and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. I will meet you at the end of row 10. Now don't be afraid, the pattern is below, so you can follow along to make sure that you have your rows correctly. You can print it off or you can have it on your phone. The next row is just going to be add an extra double crochet. So you see there's two together here, and then we have one, two, three double crochets in their own little hole, and then two together, and then three that are separate, and then two together, wait a minute. I messed up. Yep, I messed up somewhere. <laughs> All right, 
I got two, two, to, uh, two together there, two together there. That means I got to frog it. See, even I make mistakes. So you have two together and then three singles and then two together and then three singles and two together. The next row will be four of these together, a double crochet, four singles and a double crochet. The row after that will be five and so forth. When you get to the end of row 10, row 10 will be eight single double crochets. That's not a fancy thing. That's just a singular double crochet. It's not anything fancy. You'll have eight of these and a double crochet, eight and a double crochet. And I will meet you at the end of row 10. Okay, so because I'm using a 15 millimeter instead of the 11 and a half millimeter that I used for the original rug, I was only able to make it to row the end of row nine before I ran out of yarn. <laughs> so if you're using 15 millimeter, you will have a little bit less rows to get you to the end of your, your cake. So for a 15 millimeter, you will have to change color at the end of row nine. But if you have an 11 and a half millimeter, you can change color at the end of row 10. So with that being said, this is the size of it at row nine. It is about two feet across from edge to edge. I'm, I'm guesstimating because I don't have a measuring tape, but I'm going to say that looks like it's about two feet, a little over two feet across. And it's about a foot from the top to the bottom from my best guess. So this is the beginning. This is the entire first cake. We are empty. <laughs> That's all we have left is enough to stretch from end to end. Okay, now we're going to start our next color and we're just going to continue the pattern on. So because I'm at the end of row nine, I will have two double crochets to start and then I will do eight double crochets and then two together for my next row. And you guys really, I don't think you're going to need me for the rest of this. But I'm going to show you how I attach my yarn. Let me show you how I attach. I didn't bring my scissors, so I have a tail there. Usually I would cut it about here and then I would crochet over the top of it so I don't have to weave it in. But apparently I'm scattered brain today and I just did not think to do that. Pick your second color, whatever your second color can be. If you want to do a true rainbow, you can do orange next. I'm choosing pink next because I would like a little variation from my other rug. I don't want it to be identical. And I think pink and yellow look really good together. Say, okay, this is how I start my next row. I kind of like just take a tail and I lay it across the top. And then I go in. We're going to go into a hole here. And we're going to pull up a loop. And then we're going to chain one, two, and three. And take your little tail and pull this tight so it's not going anywhere. And we're going to crochet right over the top of this tail. So that's our chain three at the beginning of every row, like we have always done for all these rows. And then we're gonna put another double crochet in there. Double crochet. And then, because this is row 10, but if you're using 11 and a half millimeter, this should be row 11. I'm going to do eight double crochet for row 10. And if you're in row 11, you will be doing nine double crochet. So one, See, I'm just going right over the top of that tail. Two. Whoop. Three, right over the top of the tail. Pull some more yarn out. And that's a good thing to do when you're using this yarn because it doesn't always want to pull out real easily when you first start is pull out a big hunk so you're not fighting it. So we got three. Then we need four. And because this yarn is not slippery and not slick, your tail should not pull out from there at all. Like it's, there's a lot of friction there. Two, three, four, five. Six. Seven 
and eight because I am doing row 10, but like I said, if you were doing with an 11 and a half millimeter, you could have gotten this yellow to go a whole nother row and you would be on row 11, so you would do nine instead of where I'm doing eight. Okay, and then we're gonna do two together and that's the end. Like that's basically all you gotta do is till, just keep doing this until you finish. This pink color, with 11 and a half millimeter will last you till roll the end of row 15 when you change color again with an 11.5 millimeter hook now with the 15 it's going to be a little different but um and then you'll be able to do because the rows will get so much bigger when you get to row 16 you will only be able to do three rows before you have to change color so row 16 17 and 18 will be another color Row 19 and 20 will be another color. Row 21 and 22 will be your fifth color. And row 23 and 24 will be your sixth color. And I am going to leave you to your own devices at this point. Um, but I am going to say this. There are variations of this pattern. If you want to make this smaller, you can do just three cakes. And it will be a decent size like rug for in front of your sink. It would be a beautiful doormat. Like you put it right in front of your door when you're coming into your house, it would be absolutely gorgeous. And it would be the perfect size for a doormat with three cakes. So if you don't want a bath mat, you can make a doormat. You can make a kitchen mat, it doesn't matter. And then if you wanna make a circle rug, you can make a circle rug just instead of, and I will write this in the description box. Instead of stopping at five and going back and then going back, you will just continue in the round. You will do all seven. So you will do seven single crochets and then you will do two double crochets in every hole. This is, this is not a rug, so it's not the exact pattern, but I'm just using this as an example. Then the next row you would do two double crochets in all seven stitches and slip stitch it together and then you would have 14 for this row then the next row you chain three up and then you do a double crochet in the same stitch and then you do a single double crochet and then you do two double crochet and then you do a double crochet and two double crochet all the way around and then you connect it and then the next row you follow the same exact pattern the next row would be chain three and a double crochet in the same stitch and then you do one and two double crochets into the next two stitches and then you do two together and then in the next two stitches you do a double crochet in each stitch and then two together in the third stitch and you do that until you have a round rug and you switch colors when you run out and the really fabulous thing is you're going to have some scraps left over the further up you go especially if you use 11 and a half millimeter hook and what I did with my scraps is I made these fantastic trivets. This is a hot pad for under your, like if you bring in a hot plate to the table. And for my table, my table is a very old table and whoever owned it before us way over waxed it. So if I set something hot on my table, I get these re weird white spots. And then I know how to remove them. That's not a problem, but I hate having to go through all that to remove them. So I made these hot pads the same way you would make a rug and these keep the hot from burning or scorching or melting in the wax on my table they're fantastic they're very durable they're machine washable and if I flip it over you can tell it gets used a lot because that's what happens from the dirt from the pan or you know <laughs> it's not gonna melt because it's cotton these work fantastic for trivets and I saw these in the store made out of like a wool material for $10 each. And this is scraps. So that's an even better bonus for you guys. I gave you guys three patterns there. You have the half moon rug and you can make it in any size you want. And then you can make the circle rug by my description, so which will of course be in the pattern below. And then with your scraps, you can make little trivets. It's fantastic. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you check out Premier Homes Cotton Extra Large. Um, yeah, I think you will really enjoy this, and I really hope that some of you do this pattern with me, and we can, you know, all share our beautiful things together. Um, if you make a rug, I would love to see it on Instagram or Facebook, and just, you know, 
tag me in it and tag Premier Premier Yarns in it. You can hashtag Premier Yarns. You can hashtag Make It Premier. Any of those. So, all right, I'm gonna end this video. I'm gonna finish working on this gorgeous rug. I can't tell you guys how great this feels under your feet. Like you, it's so squishy. Like you dig your toes in, and then you know. I just think it's a good rug. Wipe your feet on it. You know, not that I would ever wipe my feet on this because it's too pretty, but you guys know. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. And don't forget, when you make these rugs, I want to see them. Bye.